There are two kinds of scripts. Scripts that are meant to be sold and scripts that are going into production. And honestly, failing to understand the difference can cause a lot of problems. So we're gonna talk about that today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking. It just is a little easy thing, just quick. Hit the like button if you're liking and finding value. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Leave a comment below. If you got questions, ask them. If I can answer them, I will. If, I, if not, if they're too long, I'll try to deal with that in a future video. Enough of that, let's jump in. First, some terminology. So if you wanna sell a script, generally you refer to that as a spec script or a speculative script, that's where it comes from. Or if you have a script that is going into production, that's the shooting script. So you have spec scripts and shooting scripts. One of the things you'll find when you start reading things about screenwriting or learning things about screenwriting is they don't ever really specify, oh, this is what you do in a shooting script or this is what you do in a spec script. So they're kind of playing by different rules. Spec scripts are all about pre-production. It's all about getting people to read it, getting people to want to buy it. Shooting scripts are all about getting the production made, making sure everybody's on the same page. So they're playing by some different rules and there's some different things that happen in each of those scripts that you need to understand, especially when you're starting out. Let's deal with the shooting scripts first because that will kind of help, in some ways, help us better understand what a spec script is about. A shooting script is doing a few things. One, it's helping plan the production. It's helping people who are working on the production, they've been hired to work on it, it's helping them plan it out. It gives them a blueprint, a template to work from. So everybody knows that if you're talking about scene 43, everybody's working on the same scene. It doesn't matter what stage of the rewrite's in, doesn't matter if you get new pages, scene 43 will always be 43 once it enters into production stage. So it's helpful to know that everybody's working on the same thing because it helps with scheduling, it helps with budgeting, it helps with casting, it helps with props all kinds of things. And what a shooting script is really doing is helping ensure that the planning and the execution of the production happen as they're supposed to be. So you could kind of boil down a production script, a shooting script. Its goal ultimately is to keep people working. That's its goal. We wanna make sure everybody knows their job and is doing their job and does it by this date because on this date we're shooting this and then this and then this. So that's what the goal of a shooting script is. Spec scripts though are not related to anything with production yet. They are meant to woo producers, to woo executives, to woo actors, to woo directors, cinematographers, production designers, that's their job. Their job is to say, hey, look at this great thing you could be a part of. Don't you want to be a part of this? This is a great story. Don't you want to act in it? Don't you want to direct it? Don't you want to design it? And ultimately, you could say that in some sense, a spec script is a love letter. Like, hey, don't you want to be a part of this? Don't you want to be a part of this? Don't you? Don't you? And that's really what's going on. Your job when you write a spec script is to keep people reading and to then at the end, want them to be part of this. So there's some things that you do differently in a spec script that you would do in a shooting script. Okay, Jake, but what are the differences? All right, well, here's the thing. If you've read any screenwriting book or listened to people, they will tell you things like, hey, if there's a sound, you need to make sure you capitalize that. If there's a specific prop, make sure you capitalize that. Make sure you capitalize all the people, make sure you capitalize all this stuff. So one of the things you're hearing is like, oh, I gotta capitalize all this stuff. But if you sit down and try to read it, it's very distracting, especially if in a block of action, you've got a bunch of capitals pointing out sounds and people and props. And it's like, well, are you just shouting at me or can I read the thing or what's going on? It just gets a little distracting. Now, in a shooting script, Yes, you might capitalize all those things to make sure that those individual departments don't miss those elements because they're important to the story. But in a spec script, you don't. You wanna keep people reading. You wanna limit the distractions. So there are some things you capitalize. You still capitalize the slug lines, right? That's, you're supposed to do that. You still capitalize transitions if you include them. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. You still capitalize a few things. One of the things you definitely capitalize is the first time we meet a character, you capitalize their name because you don't want people to miss, hey, this is an important character. Give us a little bit about them, move on. But outside of that, you don't really capitalize much in a spec script because you want people to read. Now, the other thing you have to keep in mind though is you still want it to be clear. So if it's not clear and you're like, ah, I don't know, should I capitalize this or not? Then capitalize it. Always err on the side of clarity. That's your friend in a spec script. Transitions, do you include transitions? Things like cut to, dissolve to, all that kind of stuff. Smash to black, all that. Well, 
only if it really matters for the story. In a spec script, again, you wanna keep people reading. So if there's a moment you want them to have, like, hey, I want you to pay attention. We're, we're going from this location to the other. It's not gonna be very clear. So I'm gonna put a cut to in just so you notice we're going to a different location. Or I wanna give you a breather for a minute. Let's go to, let's, we're gonna dissolve to black here and then we're gonna fade back in. Maybe I put something like that in there. Me personally, I try to avoid putting all those in unless it's just a very critical story element transition of getting from one place to the next. Dialogue. Dialogue's another thing. In a, in a spec script, you want it to be the ideal dialogue, okay? The, the things that you want to hear, the things that just sound right, the things that read right, just all of those things. You want it to be great and perfect. Now, a lot of people will do things like table reads and things like that, and those can be helpful for you, especially if, if you're learning, because it helps you start to hear cadence and how people are saying the words that you are writing. So that can be helpful. But if you're rewriting your script based on table reads, it's not always the right option because you want the idealized dialogue. You want the things that you know sound right and that fit the story. Now, if the script gets sold and an actor gets attached to it, you might have some specific rewrites for that dialogue for that character because the character, that person just has a hard time saying this line as it's laid out. Maybe you flip it around or tighten it a little bit or the director wants to emphasize something else. So you rewrite that, but that's later. Okay, so your spec script should be the idealized dialogue. The other thing, and this is actually a big no-no that I will see, sometimes I will see scripts that are for a spec script and they have the scene numbers on there. Scene numbers happen in your screenwriting software when you lock the scenes. And you only lock the scenes when it's going into production. So if you've got scene numbers, like a little number two next to each on each margin where there's a slug line and then a three and a four, if you've got that, you need to get rid of those. That is not in a spec script, no place. It screams amateur hour, so just get rid of them. It's only for the shooting script. The takeaway here is you want your script to be read and you want it to be clearly understood. It is a love letter. It is a sales piece. You are wooing people to want to buy it and make the thing. So you have to focus on that. So don't worry about transitions and directing the camera and all that stuff. Ignore all that. Don't worry about capitalizing all the props and all the sounds and all that. Ignore all that. If there's something that's critical to your story, yeah, draw some emphasis to it in as best way you can to make the read easy. White space, let people read, 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 read. That's all you want. You want them to get to the end and be like, I love this, let's go make it. And if you can do that, you're writing a good spec script. A quick note, one of the things you will find if you start reading a lot of scripts, a lot of scripts you're gonna find online are shooting scripts. So you have to pay attention to, is this a spec script, the one that sold, or is this the one that they actually took and made to get shot? One clear way to tell is if there's scene numbers. If there's scene numbers, it's the shooting script. It is not the spec script. So if you see that, you should automatically know that's a shooting script. Okay, last thing to keep in mind, Hollywood is a business and you have to kind of play by the rules in some ways to make it in the business. So your spec script should be a sales piece. It's a marketing piece. It is something to woo people and to attract them. And if you can do that, you'll get a chance to write that shooting script, I promise. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value, please hit the like button. Again, subscribe if you haven't, ring the bell, all that stuff. I really, really do appreciate it. Just thank you so much. And if you're gonna take the time to tell a story, tell a story that matters. See you later.